Hi everyone, my name is Alex Oldenburg. I am the 4-H dog project leader here in uh, Black Hawk County and today we are going to work on making a snuffle mat for your dog which is a great way for your dogs to get some mental enrichment and use their brain and figure out how to sniff and do all that when we're trying to stay a little bit more inside right now. So one of the most effective ways to actually tire your dog out is to play games that have them sniff. Sniffing is super important to dogs. It's one of their best senses and it is really, really good for working their brain. So, snuffle mat, it's made of fleece and some sort of material that has holes that you can tie the fleece onto. So, this one here is made from a piece, hi, a piece of uh, the anti-fatigue mats that you would find on a shop floor that I cut out. It looks just like this normally. Um, so it's one ninth of that shop floor mat. But if you don't have access to one of these, there's plenty of other stuff that you can use around your house to do something uh, to make a snuffle mat. Like this is a sink mat from the Dollar Tree. So um, you can use it as is. Or if you have a small dog, you can use one fourth of it and cut it up um, and that makes a really nice small size snuffle mat for smaller dogs or even cats. Cats will, cats will use that smaller one too. You can use a ball with holes in it and make a snuffle ball and when you make a snuffle ball then you'll actually end up filling the snuffle mat with food. So you'll part the fleece, fill it in the hole and then your dog will toss it around. And then today we're going to make a snuffle basket is what I'm going to show you how to tie that fleece on. But any of those things that have holes are just fine. Be creative with it. Um, you can make them big, small, whatever works for your dog. Um, I'm just going to show you with this, this office basket that I have lying around here. First, before we get started making it, I want to show you what it looks like when it's in use. So I'm going to use this one that I already have done and show you how we use it so that you can see, see what we're going for here. So anytime you're working with the snuffle mat, you are going to fluff up all the fleece. You're going to shake some food in it and rustle it in. Good chicken. Kind of hide it all around in the fleece. And then your dog gets to work to sniff it and find it. So this is Hobbs. This is my uh, seven month old duck trolling retriever. And he's very excited to get his breakfast. Um, you don't have to use it only for treats. I just feed my dogs in something like this. It gives them a nice way to get some of that mental enrichment without um, having to worry about adding too many extra calories to their diet. Snuffle mats are also great if you are working from home right now because you can feed your dog in their snuffle mat when you have that really important online meeting that you don't want the dog barking during or anything like that. It takes them a while um, to go through their snuffle mat, find all the food. Um, just make sure you supervise your dogs when they are using this if they're prone to eating stuff. Um, so we don't want them to eat the pieces of fleece. We want them to find the food, which most dogs are really good about finding the food when it's in use. Um, it's just that after the food's gone, we don't want them to continue chewing on this. So just keep that in mind with your dogs. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to let Hobbs finish his snuffle mat here. And then I will grab the supplies that we need so we can get started making our own. All right. So like I said before, there's a lot of things we can tie fleece onto. We can use the balls, the baskets, sink mats, these anti-fatigue mats for your floor. Anything that has those holes is going to be perfect for us to tie the fleece onto something that we can hide treats in for our dogs. Today I'm going to use this basket to show you guys um, what we're going to do with it. So for fleece, you can have a wide variety of fleece. These are some different assortment of scraps that I have left over from making other snuffle mats and snuffle balls. Um, for a smaller one, something about six to eight inches is just fine. For a bigger mat, if I'm tying something onto something with wider spacing like this, I go up a couple inches to about 10 inches for the strip. 
just so that I have enough left over that once it's folded in half and tied, there's still plenty of room. You can also do different widths. So you could do something that's skinnier and do more of them. You can do something wider and do less. It really depends on what you're using and what is gonna be best for kind of filling that surface up. So for this basket, we're gonna test how our strips are gonna look by just putting one through, folding it in half, and that looks like it's gonna give me plenty of space to be able to hide everything that I need in there. And I'm just gonna kinda pick through and see some of the colors and patterns that I want. Um, you can use fleece remnants from Joanne Fabrics or another store are really great because you don't need a whole lot of fleece. Usually a yard, even for this big one, is plenty. So those fleece remnants are a really nice cheap way to get a hold of it. Um, those fleece blankets that you might have laying around the house or you can find for cheap at Walmart, things like that too. Anything though that has that polar fleece um, is going to work just fine for this. Okay, let's pick out some of our colors and patterns here. I am going to pick some pinks and some blues, kind of make a fun, fun color theme. You can make it all with one color, you can do assorted colors. Typically if I'm starting with a big piece of fabric, I just pick Two to, two to three different colors that I'm going to work with. So I have my pile here that I'm going to start with. And what I'm going to do is focus on tying one piece of fleece around every single one of these. So if you want to prepare, you can count up how many different edges you have. And I am going to make this challenging for my dog by having the fleece shuffle inwards on the basket rather than out. So I'm just going to start tying here. So I have one tied right there, and then I'm going to go in the hole right next to it, and we're going to tie the second one. We're just going to continue along the line like this. Once I get to the end of the row, so I have this top row, everything has something tied on, then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna tie this row. So you can see I went and I tied all of this and now I started tying this one and we're gonna continue down that way. If you follow that pattern with whatever grid you're using, you're gonna be able to fill them in easier as you go along, rather than tying all of them one way and having to go back in and kind of fill in the spaces as it's already getting full. So you can see my second row is done and now I'm just going to continue and fill in the rest of the bottom of the basket here. All right. 
made. So now I've filled up the entire back of my basket with each row having a piece of fleece on it. And now here's my result. I have this nice thick plush bed of strips of fleece that I'm going to hide some treats in and then my dog can use and enjoy for eating their meals. All right, once again, gonna take some dog food. I am gonna work to get it down into this bed of fleece that I made. I know, I spilled some for you. And then I'm gonna let my dog have at it and go and get to snuffle around and, and earn his food. Depending on what you use, um, it's going to be harder or easier for your dog. The basket shape holds it nice and tight, so it's going to be a little bit thicker, a little bit more snuffling involved, um, depending on how thick your fleece is, how much you tie with it. Um, so if your dog is used, isn't is used to puzzle meals, try and start a little bit easier. Don't pack it in super tight with fleece. And if you have a dog that's super smart and likes to figure out the challenge, then this is the perfect opportunity for them to, to get something new.